Scotland has reached our finals through the team from Bells Hill Academy. Uh, that's near Glasgow. But they've been investigating the mysterious pollution of the River Girvan down here in Ayrshire. Clean water is very important to life and industry, so you can imagine the consequences when on the 21st of October 1979, the River Girvan in Ayrshire turned completely brown. The problems of the water of Girvan was that water was flowing from the disused Dalharn mine. This is a cutaway of the Dalharn mine, and in 1977 the water level was here. Two years later the water level had risen to here. This was anticipated and the Kilgrammy mine had been blocked off, but it was too late to stop the water issuing from the Dalharn mine. And this flowed into the River Girvan. The water board have thought of putting lime into the Girvan which is very expensive indeed. So our project is to find a far easier way and much cheaper way to get rid of this iron. Unfortunately, the River Girvan is over 60 miles away and is far too large to do any experiments on. So we need a smaller and more accessible stream. This is our pilot plan scheme, which we are using for our project. It is much smaller than the River Girvan, but it has the same sort of pollution problems as the River Girvan in Ayrshire. We intend to find out where this pollution comes from and the harm it does to the animal and plant life in the loch. And to do this, we must take samples from all over the loch. And to help us do this, we have borrowed a boat from Star Clyde Park Water Sports Centre. These are the samples which we took this morning. One from the, two from the iron stream and one from the, the loch. Over here, we are doing our analysis on these samples. I am doing the iron tests, and Ashak here is doing the phosphate tests, and Alan is doing the chloride tests. We know where the water is going to, but we don't know where it is coming from. We have found it coming out of this pipe, but we can find no record of the pipe on any maps. We'll have to search in the woods back there. We have searched the woods everywhere. This is the only stream we can find, and it goes underground over here. To find out where this is the same stream as the one down at the loch, we have to add a fluorescent dye to the water. We still have quite a bit of work to do in our project, but we have various solutions to the problem one of which is to precipitate the iron out quickly and then dredge it out. Someday we might get the girvan to look like this. When are you going to move on, actually, to work on the River Girvan? We have. We have actually moved on to the River Girvan and we've taken samples and analysed them. We've also electrolyzed them, but of course, this, to do this, we need electricity and we have carried out feasibility studies with the North of Scotland Hydroelectric Board. I noticed from the newspaper cutting on the wall that the fishermen are also interested in your work. That's right, the iron pollution has caused the salmon industry to be totally destroyed, causing very high unemployment, and we soon hope to revive this industry. The Bells Hill Academy team, Arshak Ahmed and Robert Keyes, who are both 16, and Alan McLenahan, who's 15. Sir George Porter. Robert, the iron in your river is uh, changing its chemical form all the time. Could you trace the history of these changes for us? Well, as it comes out the Dalharn mine, it's, in this, it's this colour. You know, it's a greeny, clear colour. This is iron 2. Iron 2? Yes. Mm -hmm. As it moves downstream, it oxidises and it becomes this colour, uh, orangey-brown. This is iron 3 hydroxide precipitating out yes. and colouring the water. And that's the stuff that settled, has settled on the rocks at the bottom of the river there? Yes. And your idea is to make it all turn into this iron three and then it's out of the way, is it? Yes, but you've got to do it quickly otherwise it forms a hard cement on the river bed and it stops photosynthesis and respiration in the plants. And that's not good. Oshak, um, you've carried out some electrolysis experiments um, to find out how much of the iron you can precipitate from the effluent have you got some results on this that you could tell us about? Yes, yeah, so with a static model we have precipitated 48.2%, but of course we have many variables yet, including the flow model 
and this will give us much better precipitation figures. Uh, what about the electricity, costs of electricity in your scheme of electrolyzing? You have uh, asked the hydroelectric board to help us with this out. They have just given us the price for a typical system, not the actual price for our system, just a typical layout. And uh, this is 660,000, but this is not for what we may require. This is your idea of, of, of using a generator? Yes, uh, but they've also suggested using a water wheel, which may be much cheaper. Making your own electricity and right, electrons. using the river Giffey. Mm -hmm. But have you, have you, Augustine, but anyway, have you any idea how much electricity you actually need? Because we've done some sums. We cannot see this until we have seen all our other variables yet. See what optimum variables optimise that. But you can... <laughs> go on. We, we've had a go. <laughs> and, uh, you know, uh, we, one wants to know whether it's going to be hundreds of times more than you can afford. You know how much water's flowing through. Uh, Alan, you know how much iron there is in the water, can't you? Yeah, have well, a crack at it. It could be around something like half a megawatt uh, power generation for our particular plant. It's fairly near to... Yes, well, we thought it was one megawatt. We yes. thought it was more near, near one megawatt. Came to it. Yeah. Well, it's certainly a clean method, this, mm. uh, the, the, the method of electrolysis. Mm. And I like the way they've got a whole system here. They worked out a whole system. Mm. They showed us a, uh, a map mm. of where, where the generator would be, where the electrolysis mm. would be, and so forth. Still a little bit <coughs> doubtful about the economics of it. Mm -hmm. Well, they have, in fact, calculated that the, the iron hydroxide they're getting has a commercial value, that if you, if you yes. sell it to steelwork, it would at least mm. pay for its transport and perhaps leave a little bit left over. And, yes, and in addition, I think there was the possibility of getting some funding from some Scottish Development Authority, which would possibly help to uh, uh, take care of a good yes. part of the cost. Yeah. Yes, so thank you very much, Urshek, Robert and Alan. Thank you. <laughs> It was an old wives'